Hi guys, I'm Tom Spittle, I'm the Sports Competition Manager for Sailing in the Invictus Games and with me I've got Neil Drisco from Above and Beyond Boating. Neil brings uh, I guess a wealth of knowledge being an offshore uh, yacht master and, and powerboat instructor. Um, Neil also runs a successful business helping people to basically stay, uh, stay safe on the water. Yeah, thanks Tommy. So today what, our, uh, what we're going to try and help you guys do is to figure out some some tips and some uh, some techniques that can help you with uh, man overboard recoveries. Neil and I are going to discuss uh, different scenarios ranging from being unconscious in the water all the way through to your lighter, almost funny side uh, style of a man overboard where it's just your mate who's fallen in the water and you've got him back on board and now you're giving him a little bit of stick. That sounds good, mate. I might um, might just jump in with some some thoughts then. So, look, thanks for having me along today. Um, one of the things I just thought, you know, there's a wealth of uh, experience going to be out on the water for this regatta, helping you out. Um, I thought, given that there's boats coming, like some new boats and boats been around for a while, there might be people in boats they're not familiar with. Um, I just wanted to uh, mention really what stuff they should be thinking about in terms of on the, on the boat, the safety equipment. Um, the boats have been audited haven't they Tommy to start with? Yeah, that's correct, so the Elliots themselves have got uh, the safety equipment to to, um, to cooperate um, with our Cat 7 audit requirements. Um, the rescue boats themselves will, as per maritime regulations, have uh, the, uh, the correct equipment on board. I guess the big thing Neil for, for those people using these boats, the equipment's there it's going to be locating um, where your equipment is and, uh, and knowing um, the location of it as well should you need to use it. You know, things such as knives you know, are going to be something that's really your go-to thing. I don't see anyone needing to let off a flare you know, while yeah. we're out there on Sydney Harbour on the day. But um, there's going to be some um, equipment that's, that you're going to want to need to know and you're going to need to know um, uh, if you can access that, that, that equipment quickly. Yeah, awesome mate. And I think um, I just maybe add in as well just don't be embarrassed like if you get to the boat everyone's going to seem busy when there's regattas going on if, if you don't know how to work out how the fuel gauge works or how to turn the radio on just don't be embarrassed or think oh, i'll figure it out on the way just you know there's people around i mean you've got the other boat people boat captains and people around or you've got the race director yourself but you'd much rather people kind of grabbed you and asked a question about how something works i would have thought rather than get out there and wing it yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, there's no stupid questions on the day, and uh, you know, and for myself, I'll be willing to field any questions on the day regarding um, the location um, because I think it's such an important uh, thing to have. And each boat's different. You know, yeah, some some boats they're going to have different um, ways of starting. So feel free to come and uh, come and talk to us about that. Thanks, mate. Now we've um, we talked about starting the engines. The other side of this is stopping the engines. Now we've got key stop. We've also got the kill cords or the emergency stop. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you want people wearing them, using them? Let's talk kill cords for a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Look, now from someone who's grown up on the water in my younger years, of being a bit naughty and not wearing it. Now I think you know the horror for me would be falling out of a boat and it continuing to to drive off without me and you know potentially harming others. So. For me, uh, wearing a keel cord is mandatory. Um, it's a non-negotiable, um, uh, I guess, um, action that you, you guys have to do is wearing um, your keel cord. So not only is it going to protect yourselves, but it's going to protect others um, if you uh, find yourself falling out of the boat. Yeah, awesome, mate. Uh, and we'll, we'll come back to them a little bit when we talk about getting people out of the water and stopping the engine later as well. Um, so look, going from that, let's go on to the next step then. So you rock up, um, you know, you, someone's either asked you to attend or you've seen someone fall out of a boat or they look like they need some help. You've got over there. Um, initially, doesn't matter if we're talking first aid or safety or both. Um, Everything always starts with assessed situation. What are you looking for? What should I mean? What or what should they be looking for when they're assessing the situation when they first arrive on scene? Look at it for obviously any potential dangers. So we could have found that the the man overboard has gone over maybe entangled. Um, you know whether that be with the main sheet or, or any other ropes on, on, on board the boat. Um, so that would be the the first thing that we'd be looking at. Um, is that person in the water in any distress. So 
It could be that the person is um, face down, which obviously um, is going to speed up your um, how you react to it. You might find that the person's in the water, um, life jacket, um, holding them up um, face up, and they're having a laugh. You know, and you know that okay, we can we can make sure we take the time to approach this person in a in a safe manner to to affect a, a recovery. You know that. Unlike back at home for you, Neil, they're not going to freeze to death in the water. Yep. You know, I'm sure they'll happily wait the, the the extra ten seconds to make sure that they're they're able to be rescued. And you know, in some cases, you know, we've seen people actually be injured whilst they're being rescued. You know, when 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 these steps aren't followed. Okay, thank you very much, mate. Um, look, let's dive into the shocker. So you get there and they're not moving, uh, face up, face down, but they appear to be unconscious. Um, what are we looking to do here? What, I mean, yeah, well, look, time it, is of the essence. Absolutely. Now, look, with if if the patient's face down, um, the, it's going to be a priority of someone attending next to the patient in the water. Uh, we're going to have designated swimmers, so people more suited to jumping in the water um, to help affect a, a recovery like this. Uh, so, turning that um, the the competitor or the technical official, whoever it could be in the water, we could be even help assisting a spectator um, out there of turning them uh, them face up. Now, the priority is um, is life over limb. So at this stage, it's getting that person back on board um, the boat um, as quickly as possible. So you know, if the person's not breathing, um, the the priority doesn't um, get to uh, making sure that the person's uh, back or certain part of their body body is supported in this. It's get that person back on board and we start um, going through um, our CPR training. Thanks, mate. Um, and I mean, it's an easy one to forget. I've often some of the most stressful medical stuff I've had on the water, it's, you know, your adrenaline's pumping. It's remembering that you also need to, if you can, just find that second, or get someone on the boat to find a second to call for help. Because then we've got ambulances on their way, there might be defibrillators out there, there probably paramedics, not, you know, there's all sorts of wheels we need to get turning, so it might not be immediately while someone's face down in the water, but getting that into our sort of job list as quickly as we can when it's appropriate. Absolutely, and Neil, you might find that there's someone on board the boat um, that may be, uh, maybe, I guess, distraught and panicking. This is a way that you can not only somewhat distract that person, but um, give them a purpose and a job to do. So whilst you're... Um, assisting the um, the injured or the, 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 the your, your, your person in the water they can start the process of calling for help um, we've got doctors and um, and nurses that will be out on the water on the on the race day for our practice day we're going to have a doctor on land um, who, who will be able to um, to provide assistance so the help is there it's just going to be asking for it so for myself will be your, your first uh, port of call to uh, to come over and, uh, and from that there I'm able to utilise um, some of the emergency um, services we have out on the water like our, our doctor that we'll have out there on our, me on our medic boat but also too we've got um, the Marine uh, Area Command with both Maritime and, and, and the Water Police. Awesome, thanks very much mate. Um, so the other side, we've got there, someone's in the water, they're moving, they're floating, they've got the pointy heads on. Um, one of the things I find easy to forget at this point is talk to the person, see what they, you know, see what they actually need, rather than just charging straight in. Um, one, we might be coming in in a controlled way without relying on reverse anyway, but also just trying to think, you know, is the boat in a sensible position that I can talk to them? Am I upwind of them? Um, am I, you know, am I in the way? Am I between them and the boat? Can they hear me? Can I reach them? Um, in terms of if they want help getting out the water, uh, what are your thoughts for trying to get someone on board the rib? Well, you look, making contact um, with that man overboard, it, really important, Neil, as we addressed, you can end up causing um, more damage to, to that individual. Um, so coming in at a sensible speed, um, these engines, if, if your boat is put into reverse at a high speed, the engine can actually stall, you know, so you, you're, you're not only now dealing Maybe with a uh, with, with with a wet patient, but now they've got a uh, you know a, <laughs> could have a head injury from being struck by the boat. So um, approaching the, the 
the man overboard at an appropriate speed um, and having um, separation between the engine and, um, and your man overboard. So you don't want to reverse up to your, your, your person in the water for obvious reasons of propeller strike. So it'd be um, approaching them, trying to place yourself upwind with the bow, um, reaching your man overboard uh, first. Once you've made contact, as you mentioned earlier, Neil, with the keel cord, once we've got a hold of, um, uh, of our man overboard, we need to remove the keel switch. So when I say remove, it doesn't mean take it off yourself, but actually disengage it from the engine. Once your keel cord is disengaged, your engine can't start. What can happen in the panic of trying to help pull someone on board or the struggle to get someone on board, it's easy to knock, a thr knock the throttle on the, uh, on the side of your, uh, of your console, of your boat. And the next thing, your, your, the, your boat could be taking off and, and potentially striking your, uh, your man overboard. Yeah, awesome. Um, thanks, mate. And so, in terms of getting them out, one side we can help manhandle them. You know, we've got stuff in the boat, like the seats, maybe handles on the tube, might be able to rig a, a short rope. There's, you know, the, all the boats just try and think when you're on the boat, like what, what would we do to help someone here? Once they're half up, we can help with their legs. It's a small one, but it is worth mentioning with that. If you are going to physically assist someone, make sure they know that you're about to grab them and move them, and um, just so that they actually know what's going on. It's not a shock for them. Um, remembering as well, um, we've got the option of deflating a tube, so we can also just float someone in um, if we needed to. You've got some spinal boards out there as well, I think, haven't you? Or? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, if we um, found ourselves in a situation where our uh, we had to keep our patient um, laying uh, flat. We do have a spinal board that we can that we can deploy and uh, and, and utilise for getting someone on board the boat. You know, as you mentioned, Neil, it's just going to be a case by case basis on how we deal with um, with getting someone out of the water. You know, it's a, we may have competitors out there that range in weights from you know 40, 40, 50 kilos all the way up to you know a couple of big boys, you know, of a hundred plus kilos. So. Um, getting someone on may, uh, may be very, very simple, um, but also depending on your size yourself, we want to make sure that one, you don't injure yourself trying to retrieve. Um, wear the kill cords. Uh, if they're coming to someone in the water, don't rely on reverse to stop the boat. Make sure they're fully controlled. Um, assess the situation and call for help. And remember that they got you out there as the race director to give a hand, lend a hand, it's why you're there basically, isn't it? Yeah, look, absolutely, and I know we've got um, some great volunteers out in the water that, you know, have got um, years of experience, so we're all there to, uh, to really make sure that this is a really great Invictus Games, and, uh, and hopefully if we have any on-water um, situations, you know, I've got the confidence with the, uh, with the help at hand that we'll be able to deal, deal with each um, scenario in a, in, in, in a safe and... Uh, and a prompt um, sort of way, Neil. Awesome. Thanks, mate.